Okay, welcome. Right, now, first of all, th what I thought I would do is come up with a how-to video on observation mainly because it's a real common sticking problem for all of my students. They get there in the end, but to get them going, it's really difficult. Now, what we want is a really good level of awareness okay, uh, of ourselves and of what's going on around us. That's the important thing. When you go for your driving test, you've got to demonstrate to people that you know exactly what's around the car and what's actually going on around you. All right? Simple as that, really. We've got to look for dangers right next to the car. So what's the nearest thing that's likely to damage the car? We've got to know about it. We've got to know what's coming up in the future. Um, and we're talking time-wise there, really. So it's not just what's in front of me, but it's also what's going on behind me. Because if something's coming up behind me, they're going to overtake. Or if there's a police car or an ambulance or something like that, then we need to know about it in advance. Simple, <laughs> frankly. If something's going to be sharing the same bit of road as me, I want to know about it as soon as I possibly can. So, the only way to do it, I call it four zones, it's far near dashboard rear, but basically you could think of it as like a circle around the car nearby and a circle around the car long distance and obviously know what you're doing because if you're driving down the road breaking the speed limit then obviously naughty. All right, so. I'm just going to demonstrate how I drive, and this is how I would like my students to drive. Um, drive like this, the examiner will be delighted with you, and so you'll have nothing to worry about, really. So I'm going to now do what is known as a commentary drive. You often see them on those police camera action things, right? Um, and it's basically just saying what you're seeing, what you're doing, all right? Simple as that. Nothing more sinister than that. Um, I would recommend, if you're out and about after watching this video, do them they're really good because they force you to look around and if you're not seeing sorry what I normally do is like if I check the rear view mirror then I'll say center if I check the side one then I'll say right and obviously left and then you'll notice when you're driving around that if you find yourself stop saying center left and right then it's probably because you've stopped looking around so um, just keep looking around and it really focuses the mind okay so as you might well have noticed I've got extra cars in the car, uh, sorry, cameras in the car looking forward and backwards and things like that. So I'll be trying to make a video and splice them in to see what's going on, but you'll get the idea when you see it. All right, cool. So without any delay, let's crack on with it. Right, so first of all, perimeter check. All right, now there is a car coming up, so I'm just going to wait a second, just keep an eye on him. I know that there's still nothing around me, so once this car gets out of the way, I'll just put an indicator on, quick check, and off I go. Okay, so. I'm just driving around, so looking behind me, forwards, looking at the road work sign, turning right to the end, so centre right, indicate right, position right. And we're using IPSCA information, in and out, position, speed, gear and accelerate. So I've just gone and done that, looking around, doing multiple checks, road narrows, end of the road, I'm going to be turning left. So centre left, checking there's nothing on my left hand side, indicate left, and I'm just checking again, centre left. Looking around now, I'm setting my steering, but I'm also looking at the road. So there's a couple of cars coming up the road, so I'm again checking where I'm driving and looking for the traffic. Looking for a hole to put my car into. Looking at the pedestrian crossing over there, nobody's pressing anything. Now there is a big Ford coming, so I'm just going to accelerate away from that. Checking in this mirror, okay, he's going to the petrol station, so that solves that problem. And I'm up to the speed. No, I'm not, it's a 40 zone. Apologies, I'm not up to 40, uh, but I am coming into a roundabout, so I'm just chilling it out. So I need the right hand lane to go ahead, so I'm braking, having a look around, looking forward sideways, looking sideways, looking at the boy walking over there, looking over here, looking through, indicating off for the benefit of that van driver. Away, turning on the left hand side, got 40 mile an hour zone, looking behind me, doing the 32, looking around at the car, keep left over there, 36 miles an hour. You'll probably notice when I'm doing this commentary drive, that I am looking around a lot more than I'm saying that I'm looking around, which is absolutely fine, you know, and if you were to do this on your driving test, no issues, you know, you, we can't expect it to talk about everything. Like I'm talking to you, uh, but I'm creeping in, having a look, making sure it's safe. It is. Now I've got two lanes onto there, so I'm maintaining two lanes. Going through, quick to check on my right hand side and my left hand side. Cancel the indicator. So I've got Southwood parking, golf course on the left hand side, checking my speed 36, 37, 38. And uh, now I'm doing 38. So I'm looking behind me, looking up the road, I've got caution, pedestrians crossing, and I've got a roundabout. Three additional exits, 40 mile an hour zone, drop down to 36 miles an hour, got an aeroplane in the middle of a roundabout, because why wouldn't you, obviously? So we're going left, centre left, indicate left. 
Uh, got no stopping sign there, braking. I can do that, so I'm going to pick my gear. He's going to come through. He's just approaching the wrong lane, but he'll come through anyway. Nobody on the crossing there. In cancel me indicator, looking at the car behind me. Accelerating back up to speed, so I'm at the 40. I'm just going to use my cruise control, set it off at 40. So I'm keeping an eye on the focus behind me. And breathe. Oof. Three people on the pavement up ahead. I've got 40 no stopping, keeping an eye on the focus. Looking over the head, so I've got a couple of cars coming, so I'm going to engine braking now. Foot, a bit of foot brake, he's having a big old yawn there. Right, so I'm going ahead, second exit, keeping an eye on the dude behind me. Okay, he's getting off the grey car, so I can do my gear change before the corner. Notice that, people, before the corner. Looking at the bloke in the beamer, indicating nobody's on my right hand side going through. Traffic lights have changed. Looking at the wait button, it's not being pressed because otherwise it would say wait, but we'd have a red circle around it. Uh, so I know that the traffic lights aren't going to change. A lot of people say, oh, well, there's no one there, so therefore it's not going to happen. But, you know, when I was a kid, I used to press them in hiding bushes and just laugh as cars used to stop. Should I say that? I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, it's not the fact that there's somebody there. It's the fact that it's the button pressed. Ooh, nice Aston. Very nice. I was going to use my camera as a mirror there to look at the Aston. Right, so keep an eye on the dude behind me. Still doing 38, no stopping, 40, going into the right-hand lane because that road sign there says the A327 is the right-hand lane to go ahead, and that's what I'm doing. BMW's coming up on my right, 40, no stopping, keep left. Cars for sale over there, 40 mile an hour, looking at my right, looking up at the road. Okay, roundabout, going right three on the A325 towards Aldershot. So, centre right, indicate right. Now, I'm looking around, keep an eye on the BMW over there because I'm worried about the stuff that's near me, all right? Yeah, I can see them in the distance, but it's these two that'll damage me. Right, now everybody else is in the outside lane, so I can go right now. So going through here, now keep an eye on over here. What are they doing there? The ones that are going to hit me, she's going to hit me, him, with a ladder on the roof. Nothing going on there. Okay, looking at them, looking around. Staying in the right-hand lane, keep an eye on this white car, indicating left, checking on my left-hand side, deliberately going wide. I don't trust this white car. I'm going to deliberately slow down a little bit. And just stay behind them. Okay, all right, all right. I've got a bit of confidence now, so now I'm going up. There's just something about them, and if you know, if you're driving around and you're not sure, drop back. Don't take any risks. Okay, we're going into a 30 mile an hour zone. Roundabout, centre right, indicate right. I'm going right three. Okay, big van coming down, carrying the thing. So I'm just slowing down now, looking for a hole to put my car into. There is one because the Fiesta's getting off, so I'm now going to accelerate out, and I'm just checking over here, keeping an eye on the blue car on my right. There was a puddle there. Reapply me, indicate we can, but it didn't. Okay, looking at the taxi, he's seen me going around here, looking behind me at the white car, looking at the white car, looking up the road, see if anyone's coming. Have they? I mean, they've got to give way to me, but have they seen it? You know, it's not the fact that, and I'm still looking around, you know, it's it's not the fact that they should or should not give way to me, it's the fact that are they going to give way to me, all right? At the end of the day, it's self preservation. If you're driving around, you just got to look, all right? It's all very nice to know that your insurance company wouldn't be the one paying out, but I'd still rather not be in the car crash, frankly. End of a bus lane, checking over, cancel me indicator halfway across the line because I don't want to look like I'm going into that side road there. Okay, loads of cars queuing. Taxi's coming up on my right, so left even, don't know my left from the right. So is the V dub, so I'm braking, cruising on up behind this learner, but I know I've got a Honda coming up on my right and I've got a Peugeot coming up over there as well. Okay, so the lights have changed, just sliding it into first gear, he went over to that one, keeping an eye on the Mazda behind me, just checking around, three mirrors, accelerating away. So I've still got an up arrow, got the Mazda coming up on my right hand side, now I'm starting to accelerate because the Fiesta is. Now is the Mazda going to come in next to me, got the end of the uh, dual carriageway sign, no he's queuing behind me, he's fine. I'll just do a quick blind spot check to make sure, no U-turn, uh, keep left, so looking behind me, looking around. Not a lovely day. Right, so I'm just looking for dangers now, really, frankly. So it's going to be that Fiesta or that Mazda are my imminent danger. But going into a 40 zone and I've got a yellow traffic light just changed at the top of the hill. It's just gone to red. So I'm looking right to the top of the road, right, as far as I can possibly see. Okay, now we're in a 40, so I can't accelerate until I'm in the 40. So now I'm up to speed. So I'm doing 39, 38, 39, yeah, something like that. And I'm just looking around. Lovely big gap to the Mazda behind me. Good gap to the Fiesta. Why compromise yourself, you know? If I'm going to drive to the end of the road, I could either do it right on the back of the Fiesta, or I could create a gap. Now, when we get to the other end, he's going to break and I'll close up the gap anyway. But in the meantime, the distance between me and the Fiesta keeps me nice and safe, if his exhaust pipe fell off or something. 
Okay, so we've got no right turn, two vehicles ahead, he's indicating left to go, oh, he was indicating left on the approach to a junction and then didn't take it. So he's going to aim for the petrol station, has now changed his mind, still looking around. I keep trying to use you as a mirror. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead of this, so I'm just checking on my right hand side because on the floor it says that's a left turn only lane, this one goes ahead. Uh, and that one goes ahead as well, but because you've got two lanes that go to the same place, you always take the left of the two unless you wish to overtake vehicles. All right, so I'm cruising in, picking first gear, keeping an eye on him, keeping an eye on them. They've just stalled, looking behind me, checking. Have they stopped? They have. Right, so what are they doing? They're staying in the lane, they're being good, marvellous. I'm just following my lane round. No need to indicate because I'm in a lane, checking. Is anybody there? Okay, now it's quite difficult to see that because the sunlight is reflected off the floor. So I'm still in the 30s. So I'm just easing off because I just broke the speed limit a little bit. 31 mile an hour is back under control again. If you did that in the driving test, don't worry about it. The examiners are looking for people who, not perfect, but you know, if you make an error, do you fix it? Now I'm in a 50, so now I can accelerate. And I'm keeping an eye on the car that's coming up on my right. So now I'm doing 50. Now I'm going into a national speed limit, so that's gonna be going 70 because I'm not sharing the road with oncoming traffic. Wild animals, no stopping, massive poppy. Away I go. Right, so there's nobody around me and I'm just looking around. So I'm hunting for danger. Here we go, 67, 68, 69, 70, and fifth, all right? Slip road. I'm gonna get off there, round underneath, go back up again, okay? So, center left. There isn't actually anybody to indicate to that would benefit from it, ah, uh, possibly that runner, so I'm just gonna put an indicator on just to tell her. Slowing down, cancel your indicator when you're in the side road. We've got a 40 mile an hour zone, I'm doing 40 now. It's gonna turn right at the end, so center right, indicate right. Now there's nobody behind me to indicate to, but I don't know what's going on on the road over here. Therefore, I will bug an indicator. Now, I'm aiming short, I go into first gear. Now I'm having a look. Okay, so I've got a Mazda coming down over there, nothing from over there, nothing in the road behind me. Again, it's perimeter check-in, having a look. Now I've gone out into 40 and we've got a hill here, right? So I'm looking behind me, there's nothing coming over the hill, but there could be. And so I've got to be mindful of the fact that I might need to accelerate really quickly. So I'm gonna go right, checking around. That's a no entry, so I can't go into there. Have a look, that'll do. Pick your gear, drive around the corner. Happy days, heading off towards Barmer. Going around the corner, looking behind me, cancel my indicator. Right, what have I got? I've got a no stopping, and I've got a sign that tells me that I will become the left-hand lane of a two-lane road. National speed limit, so 70. Right, so I'm keeping an eye on Holmes Ace, Holmes Ace over here. I don't really want to come up on his inside because he should be in the left, and here he comes. There you go, he's indicating. Now, if I want to, I could go for the overtake. So I'm doing the blind spot, and now I'll go around. But he's supposed to be in that left-hand lane there, so I don't want to suddenly accelerate and get him stuck in there. Now, I am turning right, third exit, at the next roundabout, which is why I've put myself into this right-hand lane early, because any second now, there you go, 83011 and a right arrow on the floor, so I'm already in the lane, because it's talking about it. Going into a 50, I'm only doing 47 as it is. So just looking around, keep an eye on the golf, looking at the roundabout sign, 3011 and 8325, it's fine, going into a 30. So I'm checking behind me, I'm slowing it down, I'm keeping an eye on the golf, I don't want to lose track of her. Him, him, I'm... Oh, God bloody, it's freezing. Right, okay. Uh, last file was corrupted when I was video, no, when I was editing the video, so I've got to do this last bit on the cake. As you can see, bloody cold. Right, okay. When it comes to observation, four zones, far near, dashboard rear, get that information in. If you're going for your driving test, remember that you're primarily marked on what you see around you and how you interact with people. If it was just, can you drive a car? We would have put you in a car park and we would have got you driving around traffic cones, but we're not, okay? so. Look around, find out what people are doing. If you know what other people are doing, you can adapt your drive to cater for them. Never take any risks. If you're coming up to anything dangerous, like the end of your road, you expect to stop. You expect there to be a car coming at you because it's England. Why wouldn't there be a car coming at you? All right. Now, if you cater for all the dangers, if you come to a corner, you go to round a corner, you can't see, you expect that there is a cyclist lying in the middle of the road. Okay. 
So come up to things, you must always be able to stop within the distance you can see to be clear, unless you're sharing the road with oncoming traffic, in which case it's half the distance you can see to clear because they're going to be doing the other half. Chill out, look around, you'll be fine. All right, that's it. Nothing more to it than that. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it informative. Um, if you want to have other videos made, please let me know. I'm quite happy to go and produce videos to help people out. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.